And that's problematic for us. Right. The, 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 what the language suggests. Right. So so if you look up. So if, if I draw a line, technically, if the line curves, I can say the line is crooked. Right. So if I'm translating from Arabic to English, I may translate it crooked, but not understand because I don't understand English in a nuanced fashion. I may not understand that my uh, and I'm putting the best construction on it. There's, there's another way to look at this, but I'm putting the best as the prophet said, put the best construction on it. OK, as Allah says in the Quran, put the best construction on it. So so it can translate directly as crooked. But there are some inherent problems. With saying she's crooked. From a nuance, from a from a from a from a nuanced understanding of the English language, not dictionary English. But practical English. So the imam says she's curved. And so this is what the prophet said. So this is how they translate this hadith. Don't try to straighten her out. Because you'll break her. Now, do you see where that leaves the mind of. A person who can only read a translation and they're trying to understand well, what was the prophet saying? Just listen to that. How, how, listen to how this sounds. Women were made crooked. So don't try to straighten them out. Because if you do, you'll break them. Because you came from a rip. So this leaves you. To conclude, OK, well, she got issues and she can't be fixed. <laughs> now. So. So. The imam said, put it in perspective. He said the, the function that the rib serves, it has to be. It has to have that shape in it. Because the ribs protect the vital organs. Right, right here, right above the diaphragm. I took anatomy and physiology, right? Like you did too, or biology in, in, in high school. If, if, you got, if you went to high school, you took biology. If you, if, 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 if you went to college, you took anatomy and physiology. If you if, if if you went to hood, somebody punched you here, right? right? Okay. So so it's right here, right? So so right right here is your diaphragm, and and when you use your diaphragm, it it, it you breathe, right? Then right above the diaphragm is the heart, and the ribs are firm. In, 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 in shape in such a way that it protects the heart. It protects the lungs. I can punch you in your gut, right? I can punch you here. There's no ribs down here in your stomach. But there's ribs up here. This is, this is a sign from God. None of this is a mistake. None of this is an accident. This is a sign from God. So if, if but if I punch you here, if there's no rib cage here, you're going to die. So the prophet in his wisdom was telling us, listen, God gave women a nature. So don't try to change her from the nature God gave her, because if you do, you'll break her. But what happens if you break your ribs? Huh? Isn't, isn't a broken rib one of the most painful injuries you can have? You break your rib, it's even hard to breathe, right? You breathe and, 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 and you experience excruciating pain. So respect the nature that God has given the woman. Love it, cherish it, honor it. Sustain it and don't try to change her from it. Don't try to make her a man. Okay, so I had to I had to talk about that because we're talking about Adam. Right? So on the first level, 
And we don't have much time left. We have nine minutes to conclude, inshallah. We got jobs, I understand. If you got to get back to your job. Um, so I won't be, I'm not going to say, well, my, my khutbah is more important than your job. Because then you're going to come ask me for some rent money. <laughs> some utility. So no, you got to keep your job. But Adam, so the teacher, he said, Adam represents creation-inspired learning. Creation-inspired learning. Indicating to all of us that Adam is in us. And our nature will inherently inspire us to learn. Now, as you get older, sometimes this is killed in you. But you, it's, not, it's not dead in the child. Because the child has a natural curiosity. It comes to the world with a natural curiosity. It comes to the world, it comes to the world looking at everything, studying everything. That's Adam. That's Adam in the world. That's Adam engaging with the creation. That's how we all come out. We all come into the world looking around, studying, engaging the creation with our mind. This is the first step in our development as human beings. And, and inside that mind is great possibilities. Allah says, and only Allah knows what's in the womb. And so arrogant man says, now we know now because we can see, right? We, we, we can do a, a, a um, what's it, ultrasound. Well, you don't know if that's going to be a righteous servant of God or a savage. You don't know if that person's going to find the cure uh, to leukemia. You don't know. Yeah, you can tell me what the biological identity of that child is. But you can't tell me what that child will be in the world. So every time another human being is born, it's Adam. And Adam is born with endless possibilities. And each one of us, we are expression of the possibility of Adam. Whatever you are, whatever you're doing. You are, you are that possibility. You, you're, you're that possibility expressed in the world. And all that potential was in Adam. The potential for each and every one of us was in Adam because Adam is more than just a biological individual. Adam represents the type. He represents the human being. And all of us are manifestations of the potential that exists in the human being. And there's good potential in him and there's ugly potential in him. And that's why when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he made his ascension, it's a very beautiful story. It says he looked to his, his right and he did what? He smiled. And he looked to his left and he did what? He weeped. And in the Prophet's conversation with Jibreel, Jabril was, they were engaging. The prophet's mind was growing. He was seeing paradise. Ah. The interpretation of that is when he looked on his right, he saw his righteous servants. Not servants, his, his righteous descendants. The, that potential in him expressed in righteousness. And it made him smile. And when he looked to the left, he saw those who had not yet come into the best of their human expression and, their, and, 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 and they were retarded in their development. So when he looked at them, they were not righteous and it made him weep. So this is in all of us and we got to stop. But alhamdulillah, next week we'll get, you know, the prophet was offered wine and, and, and milk in paradise. He was offered wine and milk in paradise. 
So alhamdulillah, there's a lot. There's a lot to unpack. So, so the, the, the take home message is that teen, that clay can be shaped and formed and that clay has endless possibilities embodied in Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. And, 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 and how that clay turns out is a direct result of the influences that are touching it. And the beautiful thing is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, God removed all the environmental influences on him and God shaped him himself. He shaped him himself. So when you see him come into the world, although he was among the Arab, he did not have their bad habits. He did not have their prejudices. He did not have their shortcomings, although he was Arab in every way. He dressed like them. He ate like them. He liked the food. He, he had the culture. He had the name. He had the mannerisms. But in his essence, Allah did not let that culture influence him. He came out only shaped by God. And so Allah says, Certainly you are upon the most exalted khuluk. Standard of character. And that has a reference directly back to khalaqa, which is creation. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in amma ba'da So dear beloved Muslims as we uh, conclude for today remember you are Adam and just like Adam had many possibilities, so do you. And don't let the world, don't let people who want to give you weak ideas, don't let them limit you and the possibilities of what you can become. But the key to unlocking those possibilities is the word of God. Without the Quran, you're not going to get there. Without the Quran, you're not going to unlock those possibilities. You can unlock a whole lot of possibilities now. You can without the Quran. You, you, you can learn science. You can learn math. You can become a great engineer. You can become a, some, of the, some of the best surgeons. They, 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 they're not religious. But they're limited. They're limited because they don't have that connection with God. You can be just as good or better than them. And then on top of that, you, you, you will go further than them because you have the word of God in your life. And the word of Allah sensitizes you to your human condition so that no matter how great of a surgeon you become before you go under into someone's brain or into someone's heart you say oh Allah guide my hand today and you keep your humility and you keep your humbleness and that humbleness whatever your pursuit is that humbleness will make it better so may Allah keep you safe we're blessed today to have Minister Akbar Muhammad with us. Long time pioneer for Islam in America. I wasn't expecting you all. If, if I had a known, we could have made proper accommodations, but this is the house of God, so there's always proper accommodations. For those who are looking in the back, yes, we wanted to make sure we got all the bids and it rained, so now. <laughs> We can make sure we've identified all of the spots where it's um, leaking.
so we can get it patched. We got several bids and the work will start on uh, uh, fixing. We just didn't patch it up because we didn't.